I'm not a college student. I don't have unlimited funds. Help isn't one wire transfer away. But I didn't give up on my degree. Rising costs prevent many students from starting or finishing their degrees. But Strayer University is a leader in affordable education. I know I can do this. Now I have the chance. The Strayer Graduation Fund can cover up to 25% of your degree, saving up to $14,200 in overall tuition. I'm not just a college student. I'm a Strayer student. Over 100,000 graduates, over 120 years of making it possible. Strayer University. Find out more at strayer.edu today. Strayer University is providing new bachelor students with a new laptop. After three completed quarters, it's yours to keep. It's not too late to enroll. Make your degree possible. Possible starts now at Strayer.edu. Strayer University is certified to operate by Chef. Terms and conditions apply. Blog Talk Radio. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why y'all so happy? And you don't know. Charvette Mitchell is on the radio. It's time to get motivated, excited, and influenced. And influenced. Why? It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, live from Richmond, Virginia. And now, here to motivate, excite, and influence you, Charvette, Charvette Mitchell. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia. But guess what? Heard all across the world, wide web. Hello, hello. Welcome to all of those that are joining us, those that are hanging out already on the phone lines, those that are coming in from Twitter, those that are coming in from Instagram. Hey, Grand Family. Those that are coming in from Facebook. What's going on? Hashtag Coaching with Vet Facebook group. Shout out, shout out. Uh, and to all of our broadcast stations. So much for checking us out here today. So, listen, let me tell you about today's show. Uh, we are kicking the top of the hour out uh, with a special guest. She's hanging out with me in the virtual green room. I'm going to be bringing her up to the mic momentarily. Lady Anika Stewart, she's joining us. She's an author. She's the founder of Embracing Your Inner Woman. And I'm telling you what, she is on a mission She's dedicated to encouraging women really to be inspired through Jesus Christ. And she teaches women to develop greater relationships with God. And um, she has an awesome testimony and just a wonderful spirit. So you're going to get to hear all from her. And, and, and she has a brand new book release, The Di- uh, Diaries of an Elect Lady. I choose to live. I choose to live. You're going to get to hear all about it. But then listen. Stick around because our second segment is going to be juicy. It's going to be good. Listen, we're talking all about relationships in the second segment. We have a a dynamic married couple, a couple that's coming. Um, They have started this awesome Periscope, broadcast Periscope show uh, about relationship empowerment. And they're out to just empower couples, share from their own experiences and all of that. So we're going to be talking to Elder Martiz Coleman and Minister Tish, Tish Coleman, uh, they're going to be joining us, uh, really, again, helping to have healthy, productive, committed relationships. And so if you do have any of your relationship questions or topics, you can put them in the chat room or you can hit them up, hit me up in any of my DMs uh, if you want any questions answered during the relationship segment. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. Uh, Make sure you share, share, share. Tell people what you're listening to. Send them over to Charvette.com and tell them to tune in right now. So again, uh, we're kicking off the top of the hour with Anika T. Stewart. She's joining us. Listen, she's been on a spiritual journey since she was a young child, and she is on a mission has a heart to serve women of all ages. Uh, And so that's what got her started with embracing your inner woman, uh, that foundation. And so coming up to the mic right now, Lady Anika Stewart, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. Well, we are glad, glad, glad to have you. So this is a get-to-know-you um, style interview, so I'd love for you to share just, um, you know, how ministry started for you. How far back can you remember, uh, you know, being pulled in or drawn into ministry? Um, as, a, as a young child, my mother, um, 
she she raised me in the church. Um, she raised me in the church as a young girl. So as far as back as I can remember, as, like as young as five years old, I've I've always been in in church and I've always um, known who God was in our lives. So um, it grew up from just childhood, just knowing who God was. And as I began to grow and develop as a as a young woman, I received salvation for myself as a, as an adult. So that's how it wow. started. That that's how it started. And so why did your passion become really just blown up for women in particular and the needs of women? Um, all my life, um, since I was a little girl, I was I was told um by my leader at that time, the over the late overseer Rosie Johnson that um I had God had a calling on my life and he had chosen me for work and I really didn't understand what that meant. Um, Mm -hmm. until I joined um, a church called City of Refuge, where I'm presently under the leadership of my apostle now. And um, I had embarked upon a a trial in my life where I was broken and, you know, um, I I felt alone and I felt abandoned. And God began to work on me and he began to talk to me. And he told me about this ministry that I have now, which is Embracing Your Inner Woman, and how I was going to be able to minister and impact the lives of women of all ages. Um, So here I am now doing the work that he's called me to do with ministering to women. Well said, well said. And how did you come up with the name, the title of your uh, foundation and your organization? It was in the year 2009. Um, God gave me... The, the name Embracing Your Inner Woman um, because at that time um, I had to embrace my inner woman. I had to embrace, I had to embrace the things that I did not like about myself. I had to embrace my barriers. I had to embrace um, my shortcomings, my habits, and the things that I didn't like about myself, the things I didn't want people to see. I had to embrace those things in order to 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 and embrace the woman that God was calling me to be. So um, through my brokenness, I birthed my ministry, and I began to embrace those things that I didn't like about myself. And here I am today being able to be, you know, made whole and and not to say that I'm perfect, but, you know, and I'm constantly, you know, doing the work with embracing who I am and learning and developing and maturing. We are all under construction. Uh, every last one of us has, should have an under construction sign uh, really posted over our over our lives. And do you find that um, women continue to have just struggled either a scene and whether they're in the church, out of the church, relationship issues? Is it you know? Do you see common things that women continue to just you know have to deal with? Yes, I do. Um, as a woman, we're we 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 are emotional creatures. God has made us to be emotional. So a lot of times, you know, we go we we go off of our feelings and how we're feeling about from day to day. So you know, a lot of times um, when I'm talking to people and and just for myself as well, I try to always be conscious of my thoughts and not to get caught up on validation from others because. A lot of women, we do we do like to um, have that sense of love and belonging. We wanna we wanna be loved. We wanna belong. We want companionship. You know, um, that's just from the beginning of time with Eve. You know, um, so if we learn to make that conscious decision of you know encouraging yourself, building yourself up, loving yourself, whether someone tells you you're beautiful or not, you have to know it. So I'm very. Um, adamant about building myself up and not looking and seeking for validation from a man especially or from anyone just to know who I am and without a shadow of a doubt, you know, we as women, we got to know who we are. Um, When you don't get that support, support yourself, encourage yourself and keep going, you know. So sometimes we lack in that area because we all want to be loved. We all want to belong. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whoa. If you just tuned in, hey, you're checking out the Charvette Mitchell radio show. We're chatting up here uh, with Lady Anika 
Stewart, uh, and we are talking about her organization, her foundation, uh, Embracing Your Inner Woman, and listen, a hot new book, hot off the press, Diaries of an Elect Lady, I Choose to Live. So you got to tell us that title, you know, with all of these different like movies and things that are out, Diary of This and Diary of That, uh, what is your book about? Diaries of an Elect Lady is simply about um, accountability. It's about healing. It's about forgiveness. It's about hope. It's about overcoming, um, finding your purpose. It's just about it's about so many different things. But you know, whatever you whatever you need the book to be about, I'm sure you can find it. Um, because I am an overcomer and I chose to live and that's where that came from, you know. So the book is about so many different things. It's about overcoming drug abuse. It's about over overcoming abandonment. Um, it's about finding your purpose. That's what the book is about. And I love how the book opens up by saying, you know, in this book, you will read about a young lady. And while experiencing the greatest challenges, she found her calling and purpose in life. And uh, do you think that's really the case for all of us? Whenever we go through a struggle or a trial, there is some purpose, some, it's some road it's trying to take us down? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I I preach this daily. Um, I believe that it's not when you are, everything is going perfect in your life that you are going to find your purpose. It's when you are at your lows of lows. It's when you are experiencing your worst challenge in life. It's when you are desolate. It's when you feel alone. It's It's when you feel abandonment, when you have no one but God when you have no one to talk to but him and you find your strength in him is when you're going to find your purpose and when you're going to begin to reach out and begin to move forward in that. That's when you find your purpose. It's not when you're happy and everything's going well. And that's All what right. happens. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love that. Find your purpose and find your strength and find your strength in God. And so you have an acronym, so LIVE, I Choose to Live, which certainly that in and of itself, just face value is powerful. But talk about the what the acronym uh, is that you came up with for LIVE. The acronym for LIVE stands for LIBERATED. Um, the I stands for IMPROVED. The V stands for VIVACIOUS. The E stands for ENLIGHTENED. I believe that once you make a decision to live, once you make a decision to no longer be bound, no longer live in lack, no longer um, be be bound by your circumstances and, and your financial situations, and when you choose to live, that means you are walking in freedom. That means you are walking in victory. That means you are walking in peace and you are walking in humility. Um, it can be whatever it is that you need it to be, but you're choosing to live. You're, no, you're choosing not to succumb to your emotions. You're choosing to be the lender and not the borrower. You're choosing to reach those destinies and that purpose that God has called you to be. All right, so you are choosing to live. And you talk a little bit about um, the book, uh, in the book about, you know, having a smile on your face, but then, Later, really, there were tears or you almost kind of like that mask. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. So um, I, I want to give you an example. Okay. So imagine I'm a, I'm a minister. I'm an associate pastor now, but back then I was actually a minister. And um, I had just got married to my husband um, in the year 2009. And we had only been ye- only been married for about a year. And so I'm in the home, I'm sitting down on my couch, and um, he comes to me and he says, I want a divorce after a year of marriage. And immediately Mm -hmm. in that moment, I was broken. I was hysterical. I felt like, oh, my God, I felt embarrassed. I was ashamed. Um, So when I talk about overcoming that mask because even though I was a minister, I felt as though I had to still be strong. 
And I felt yeah. as though I couldn't let nobody in. I couldn't tell people what was going on. I couldn't because of my shame and because of my embarrassment and everything that I was, you know, dealing with on the inside. I couldn't dare let nobody see what was going on inside of me. But it wasn't until God started to tell me, you got to remove the mask. You got to let me in. You got to let me heal you. You got to let me feel you so that you can release this brokenness and you can begin to smile internally and be filled with joy internally. So once he told me that, it was a work, I and mean, it was a process that needed to be get to get done, but, uh-huh. um, you know, I, I had to come to that realization that I could no longer operate out of the mask. I had to be vulnerable, and I had to be truth, be, be true with people and, you know, be transparent. Because people want to be, people want you to be real. They want to, you know, understand what it is that you're going through and how you got through it. So that's what's overcoming the mask. We can't sit behind our titles. Ooh, listen, I want to applaud you for being transparent because so many of us, you know, we don't, we want to just keep the persona up and we don't want to show where we have come from, where what we are in and what we are dealing with. Right. So I, you know, I salute you because so many people, you never know that they struggle or deal with anything. And so um, kudos to you. And a matter of fact, one of um, the reviews from Amazon, uh, one of the reviewers, uh, someone who purchased your book said, this book is very inspiring. Not a lot of women that are leaders in the church or ministry are willing to share their struggles as well as submitting to God's call on their life. This book gives you the insight on that and the push to go on with the call that God places on your very own life. This mm-hmm. book is an inspiration to everyone great read, very encouraging, and that's from an Amazon, uh, someone who purchased it on Amazon by way of Kindle. Uh, so listeners, you can go look at that review for yourself and pick, while you're over there, you can pick up a copy. Uh, you can pick that up in the Kindle format. Where else, uh, Lady Anika, can they purchase your book? Yes, you can You can purchase my book on um, Amazon.com, of course, but you can also purchase the book on my website, yes. Um, the, the name of the website is LadyAnikaStewart.com, and that Anika is spelled with the I. So it's LadyAnikaStewart.com. You can purchase it on my website as well, and it's through paperback and Kindle. All right, so you have options there, and it is a beautiful website if I – Say so myself, oh. Mitchell Productions clientele there, VIP clientele. Uh, shout out, shout out, shout out. Yes, an uh, unshameless yes. plug. So I, I love that. And so you you have taken, you know, not just kind of words and not just kind of um, say, you know, I'm putting a book out, but you actually are in the community every Friday. So talk about the event, the things that you do on Fridays. Embracing Your Inner Woman, we, we host a support group. The support group is for women, um, and and it's called it's called Live. Actually, it's, it's from the acronym um, um, I choose to live, and it's called Live. And, and us women, we come together. We 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 come together, and you know, we talk about so many different issues. Um, um, that we're dealing with on a daily basis, you know. So we come together. Sometimes we have refreshments and food and, you know, and we play games and, you know, we just come together and we, we, we draw strength from one another, you know, yeah. and we encourage one another, you know, and, and we strengthen one another, you know, whether it's just, you know, coming together and them having that time to be able to release. Because sometimes you can't talk to everybody. So in that, it's, it's like a sisterhood, a real sisterhood. We come together and they release and we talk and we have fun and we enjoy each other's company. And we just talk about life. And um, sometimes we even do social events as well. We go out and, you know, watch a movie or, you know, go to someone else's house and, you know, eat dinner, things like that. It's a, it's a support group for women, though, those that are broken, those that feel alone, those that have dealt with abandonment, and all kinds of sorts of things, those that are divorced. Oh, right, something something almost for every woman, really, to fit into. And um, where are you located? So I know we have listeners from all over, so they're like, oh, where can I, can I participate? Where are you located, and how can people participate? Um, I, am, I, li- I live in uh, Dover, Delaware. And that is where the support group is. We're there every Friday from 6 
8.30 to 7.30. It is, the address is 430 Newcastle Avenue, Dover, Delaware, 19904. And we also do live broadcasting, which is something new, um, you know, mm-hmm. trying to bring in people who aren't in the area physically, but they can join us on Facebook. Um, you know, you just have to follow Embracing Your Inner Woman, Lady Anika Stewart Facebook page. And you can meet us there every Friday at 630. Okay, so this is wonderful because you you are so um, consistent with your live streaming. So um, this is the wave of the future, listeners, technology. So if you're like, I'm not in Delaware, I'm not anywhere near Delaware, but by way of Facebook Live, which is a live streaming, live video streaming um, option that's within Facebook, um, if you go and follow, and listen, I tagged, I tagged, hey, shout out to all of our Facebook friends that are listening in. I have tagged uh, Embracing Your Inner Woman, the Facebook fan page. You just click like, and then you'll get the, you know, you'll see um, when Lady Anika Stewart is broadcasting live. So make sure you do that. Have you found um, that you receive, like, really cool questions being live or people interacting with you, or do people kind of watch and then maybe reach out to you in the inbox? What has been your, your your response from your live broadcast? The response has been a mixture of both where um, is, there is engagement going on um, through through the live feed, and then some people will come in later with the replay and ask questions and um, talk and, you know. Um, and honestly, some people, they may not even say a word. I have a lot of them, they'll just inbox me and like, you're, you know, really touching my, um, you're really touching my life, and I appreciate your morning inspirations, and, you know, so I, it, the, the feedback is just overwhelming. I am so thankful to everybody, because you can be doing anything else with your time, but because you chose to, you know, be a part, I don't take those things lightly, so I, I just thank everyone who has been supporting the, the broadcasting and tuning in and giving me your feedback, because it's much appreciated. All right. Shout out, shout out there. And um, definitely have to mention your, you know, your academic background and, you know, your your ongoing pursuit of education. Um, so you certainly uh, graduated valedictorian class of 2008 from Bear Christian Academy, and you attended Delaware Technical Community College um, on the dean's list there. And then uh, you are also, you've accepted your degree as drug and alcohol counselor. So talk a little bit about your your counselor hat in counselor world that you you know that you operate in. Um I I chose to be a counselor a drug and alcohol counselor because of um my my recovery. Um I was addicted to drugs um and alcohol from the age of 12 up until I was maybe like 22, 23. Um, but anyway, I, I wanted to, to give back to people who feel as though they don't, you know, they aren't able to recover from drug abuse and drug mm-hmm. dependency. So I, I took up that degree, and I am now a counselor at a facility where I help people with um, mental health um, and drug abuse and drug dependence. So I love what I do. I love going to work and helping people because I'm planting seeds, speaking yeah. life into them. You know, they don't even know it, but I'm like, you know what, I believe in you because you can overcome. And sometimes that's all people want to hear is that somebody believes in them. Yes, and they have an example to say she was here somewhere in my vicinity, and now look how well she's doing. I can make it up and out of this. We got to give you a round of applause for that. (laughs) Listeners. Because that has certainly got to be a labor of love and really ministry. Yeah. That's really kind of that, like teaching and those type of professions, nursing, those type of professions, you know, even though they are a job, they really equate to ministry. Um, when you come, yeah. when it comes down, when it comes down to it. So we salute you in that area. Uh, so one more Thank time, you. let's shout, oh, you're welcome. Let's shout out um, your book, how they can purchase it. Also how they can follow you and connect with you online. Okay, so again, the name of the book is Diaries of an Elect Lady. It is available on Amazon.com, and it is also available on my website, LadyAnikaStewart.com. 
dot com. If you visit the site, please subscribe and join the Choose to Live email. And also, you can reach out to me on Facebook and like my page. It's Embracing Your Inner Woman, Lady Anika Stewart. And you can also follow me on Twitter. And my name on Twitter is Choose to Live 84. And also, um, you can also, if you would like to book me for any speaking engagement, women conference, if you want me to be a part of your event, you can reach out to my PR, Latanya Boyd, at faithinorder at yahoo.com. Woohoo! Big shout out to Latanya Boyd. <laughs> friends of yes. the show and Tamika Hall. Big shout out, big shout out. Uh, talk a little bit about kind of just the team that helped you bring your your book to life. Oh my God, to God be the glory. Um, yes. I, I I thank God for the, the, the connections that I have made on this year alone. Um, it, it started out, I reached out to um, Miss Shania Ellis and she's, a, she's also an author of a book. And um, I reached out to her because I didn't know what to do, but I knew what God told me to do. And yeah. so she linked me up with Tamika Hall, um, and she helped me publish my book. She gave me all the resources that I need. She did the editing. She did my book cover. I mean, she helped me in so many different ways. And then from there, it went to, I got connected with um, my PR, which is Latanya Bull, who is also an author. She's an empowerment coach. She's so many different things. And she's been guiding me and coaching me. And, you know, I'm so humbly grateful for their help and their assistance with, you know, helping me um, build my brand. And, you know, because sometimes, it's hard to connect with other women because of the stigmatization that we can't get along and we right. have to be jealous of one another. But that's not true. And, you know, he through all of the connections, you know, I was able to get my website designed by the fabulous Charlotte Mitchell. <laughs> so, you know, um, I was just, I just couldn't believe how everything came together. I mean, it literally came together full circle with, with these fabulous women. So kudos to all of you. I thank you all for your time, your diligence, and, and your faithfulness, and you're not, you know, withholding information. You guys are willing to share, and it's awesome. Yeah, you know what? And we, on behalf of everyone, I say thank you. Um, but I really think it brings up the point that in this season, in particular, those that are um, entrepreneurs, and female or male, you know, whoever, catch it, catch right. it if, if it applies to you. But it is really about strategic partnerships. It is really like how we're going to really get things done. And I think we're seeing that really in the things going on in the world um, today with everything Black Lives, hashtag Black Lives Matter, all right. of the incident, you know, it is going to be us coming together. It is about economic stability, economic empowerment, and we've, we've got to do it. It's got to be strategic partnerships with all of us together. Yeah. So I think that's a great case study example right there. All of the women you mentioned um, are women of color, African-American, and so there you go. We helped our dollar stay in circulation in the African-American community a little longer than normal. So no diss to any other, uh, anyone else that's listening, but I'm just shouting out. All right. Listen, that is, oh my goodness, we are almost out of time. Uh, I'm telling you, but it's been great chatting with you. Um, just wishing you with much more continued success. Any events that you have coming up that you wanted to shout out? Um, at this time, we 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 are planning for our women's conference that we do every year. So be on the lookout for that, and make sure that you follow me or subscribe to our Choose to Live email, um, so that way you can be aware and be in tune with us on the on the upcoming events that we do have. Um, just join me on Friday. We have our last book club session at 630. Join me on Facebook Live, or if you are in the Dover area, come on by. We welcome everyone to be a part of this. All right. Big shout out to Dover, Delaware, and all of those in that area, and uh, Facebook Live. So we thank you so much, Lady uh, Anika Stewart, for stopping by. Thank you very much for having me. I I, I enjoyed myself. This was fun. (laughs) See, there you go. We'll have you back. We'll have you back. (laughs) All right. 
You're welcome. All right, listeners, um, we're going to be taking a quick commercial break. Uh, but after the break, listen, it's going to be all about relationships. We have Elder Coleman and Minister Coleman, husband and wife tag team duo. Listen, we're going to be talking about relationships. Uh, they have a brand spanking new, powerful, uh, live Periscope broadcast, relationship empowerment, talking about communications and um, emotional communication and intimacy. and Oh my goodness, all of that, guarding your relationship and all that good stuff. It is all coming up in the next segment. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Don't you move. We're going to be right back. All right. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Charvette will be back after this. Introducing contemporary gospel artist Diani with a new hit debut single titled The Blood on Remail Records. Though they slay me, crucify me, I have been washed in the blood I'm reading. Purchase Diani's new hit single on iTunes, Amazon in February. Once again, be sure to check out contemporary gospel artist Diani with a new hit debut single title, The Blood on Remare Records. Follow Diani on Twitter, Facebook by going online to DianiMusic.com. That's spelled D-E-O-N-I-M-U-S-I-C.com. That's DianiMusic.com. Are you starting a new business, releasing a CD, writing a new book? Consider Mitchell Productions for your web design services. Visit www.mitchell-productions.com for portfolio samples, specials, and package prices. Remember, a website is not a luxury item. It's a necessity. Check out mitchell-productions.com or find them at facebook.com slash mitchellproductions. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day by LaTanya Boyd consists of inspirational messages that offer daily words of empowerment, promote spiritual growth, and development in the Lord Jesus Christ for your day-to-day living. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day. Available now on Kindle, ebook, and paperback. Log on to www.letiboyd.com. She's here to motivate, excite, and influence you. She's Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Mitchell. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show with in-depth interviews from today's leading authors, gospel artists, stars that you want to know about. And now, Charvette Mitchell. All right, welcome back. Welcome back again to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond. Virginia to up to down. <laughs> if you watched, uh, if you've been, <laughs> if you watched VH1 last night, you know what that's about. Uh, Missy Elliott giving us a big shout out uh, for the VA. Uh, but anyway, we're glad to move right on into our next segment uh, on the Charlotte Mitchell Radio Show. Listen, our the goal of our show is to motivate, excite, and influence. And we love it when we can chat about relationships because you know what? Everybody can relate. And um, everybody can always hear some good information about relationships. So let me bring my guests on air right now. They've been hanging out in the virtual green room, so I know they've been enjoying some virtual snacks. Uh, coming up to the mic, we have Elder Coleman and his lovely wife, Minister Coleman. Welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, guys. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. Hey, glad to have you. Thank you for joining us. We're glad to be here. Yes, we're very excited. All right. So are you all ready, like, to answer all of the world's questions about relationships? We'll answer what we can. (laughs) Very good. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. We we can't kill world hunger, but we we're gonna share gonna share uh, today. So I gotta tell you how I um, just ran across came up with this segment. So I'm kind of scrolling through Facebook, um, and I was hanging out in Minister Letitia Pope. Mr. Coleman, you posted a, a great um, flyer saying, "Hey, we're gonna be jumping on Periscope uh, and talking about relationships." And relationship empowerment. And I was like, ah, oh, that's great for the show. So that's how we all got connected. So I'd love to start. I'm going to start um, with you, Minister Coleman, and then go to Elder Coleman. Just how did you all come up with this idea? Well, um, 
Yeah. I started a women's ministry, and it was geared towards, you know, single um, single women and married women because we have our own individual issues that we need to work on to bring the relationship full circle as a whole. So my husband started um, Marquis Coleman Ministries to help empower men. And so um, someone suggested from seeing the different things we were doing, it's like, why don't you guys do a little a, a little periscope thing? You guys need to do a video. So I talked, to, talked it over with him. He was a little reluctant at first. Uh-huh. But, um he came around and we did the first segment and we got such a great response from it. And so it's like now we couldn't stop if we wanted to because it's just become a mandate. We really, really desire everyone that is willing and open, if you want the chance to have a healthy relationship, you deserve it. So that's yeah. what we're here for. We want to give them a chance to be happy. Wonderful, wonderful. And so, Elder Coleman, uh, you got pulled into this, but what, what, what was the trajectory? What changed your your opinion to say, yeah, we, I can jump on board with this. I can do this. Um. Well, I, definitely great question. Uh, what changed it was seeing, you know, what was going on with with relationships in the 21st century and uh, seeing the uh, downfall, the side effects. And uh, I was reluctant at first because of the responsibility and accountability that comes with it. Um, it is something uh, that's very serious. And everything that we share and everything we give, uh, people definitely latch on to. So um, I definitely understand the importance of influence and impact. Yeah. So it, it, it is very important, you know. And so that's why I was kind of like, you know, oh, at first, like, I don't know, honey, you know, because... Um, I, I just see the seriousness of it and looking at, you know, different ratios such as, you know, divorce rates and uh, the reasons for separation. And a lot of things start to bother me. So, it, you know, I told my wife, like, hey, you know, look, we, we got to get involved. We got to get engaged. You know, I just, you know, put on that, that you know, that energy and, and that drive and focus and say, hey, let's do it. You know, and so here we are. We're doing it. All right. Applauding both of you for uh, for jumping out and being examples, uh, you know, Christian couple, uh, young couple. I'm going to say you're young. I don't, you know, I'm not going to ask you to say your, your age, but. <laughs> yeah, but just yeah an we're, example. We're, we're young at heart. We're young, young <laughs> neighbor, young at heart. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So when you did your first uh, Periscope and, and those that are listening um, if you don't know what Periscope is, it is a app that you download on your phone, and it allows for live broadcast, live video streaming, where you can actually see people live uh, from your phone or, or now actually from the computer as well. So that's what it is. All right, so number one, tell people how they can find you on Periscope, and then what was your first, when you did your first segment, what did you all talk about? What's the, what was the topic? Wow. Oh, man. Um well, they well we do the recording from my Periscope account, um, Life According to Tish, and um, that's how they can find us. Um, okay. And the first the first topic that we we talked about, I think it was really pretty open, um, and the participants that got on, they were just shooting questions, and it was just a flow. So that was like our very first one. Um, and we just wanted to talk about just empowering people. What areas did you need empowerment? What questions did you have? So that we kind of got a, a foundation, a little, uh, uh, we laid a foundation for what we were going to do in the next one. And the questions that were coming, you know, we had biblical principle. We had um, just common sense with some things. And, and it was very, very insightful. And the questions just kept coming. Wow. Uh, left field question. Any left field questions? Uh huh. Like that kind of stomped you, kind of made you pause and say, "Okay, how do we address this?" I mean, yeah, we had like some. I mean, it was quite a few questions. And to be honest with you, Charvette, one of the things that come across my mind is is a very uh, heavy topic. You know, it's regarding like abuse and different types of abuse. You know, abusive relationships and how to handle that. You know, there's different levels of abuse, whether it could be physical, mental, emotional, how to handle those type of things. So, yeah, we were kind of sometimes like, uh, how to come about it. And, you know, with the help of God, you know, being able to and working together as a team, that's one of the things that's great about it is, you know, I love working with my wife. We just, you know, 
we bounce off each other. And so really just how to approach that because a lot of people are dealing with uh, relationships that are not healthy. So I think mm-hmm. one of the things you know, my wife was talking and came to me, the question that you had, was we, we one of the topics was unhealthy relationships and how does that look, you know, and uh, a lot of people are in unhealthy relationships or unproductive and just kind of, yeah, toxic and how to discover signs of that uh, because what me and my wife discovered is people are getting together uh, off of mere just passion and yeah. not purpose. And not purpose. And so when you don't, when you're not connecting with purpose, you're connecting with passion, you, you, it's not going to really go far. Passion can phase out. It can, it can phase out. But with purpose, it lasts. And so that's one of the things is, you know, identifying unhealthy relationships and discovering uh, the purpose. Woo, somebody needs to tweet that. Somebody needs to Facebook <laughs> that. Are you getting together because of passion or are you looking for the purpose? Are you trying to pursue yeah. purpose? Yeah. 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 And so what are the signs? What are what are maybe the top three to five signs that you are in? I like how you said either unhealthy or unproductive because sometimes people will think unhealthy is only, you know, it's abuse or, you know, it's And whereas unproductive could be just like this is not gonna go anywhere. If you if you boil this down, where is this going? So what are top three to five signs of maybe unproductive or unhealthy relationship signs? Um, well one of the first signs of an unhealthy relationship is if it's just constantly draining you. If you find yourself always pouring out into that person putting into that person and giving of yourself to that person, but you're not getting anything back. That's not healthy um, spiritually for you, and it's not healthy physically for you because you become stressed, drained, and worn out. Um, an, another sign of, a unprodu- a sign of an um, unproductive relationship is where you have dreams, you have vision. You have um, purpose within you, but the person that you've connected yourself to is not connected with it. They don't push you. They don't want to listen to what you have to say. They're not in tune to where you feel like you're, you know, to where you feel God is taking you or where your purpose is trying to bring you. Um, that's one of the issues. Lining up, when you line up with destiny, your purpose will become more apparent into what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So when you're unproductive, you're not doing anything that you have been purposed to do. If you're supposed to be running a business and you're not doing it, you don't have that support system, that's unproductive. You're not mm-hmm. producing anything out of that relationship either. You're not producing love. You're not producing a strong connection. There's no strong foundation. There's nothing being produced. only thing that's happening is you're being sadness. Woo! If you can't say ouch, if you can't say amen, say ouch, as they as they would say. <laughs> Elder Coleman, anything you want to tag in, add into that? Uh, yeah, it's, my wife said some great things. Um, when I think about purpose, um, I think about you both going in the same direction, and it's very important that you both are headed the same course. What I learned and discovered in people, uh, relationships, or just in general, everyone comes from different backgrounds, and every person is raised different. Every person thinks different, has different thoughts and views. But you have to come together cohesively uh, together as a team to be willing to move in the same direction. Um, the vows in Proverbs 18 to 1, a man is sound of a wife, sound of a good thing, obtain a favor from the Lord. But what it's really saying is a man has to have a mental capacity, financially, emotionally, mentally, to be able to uh, be their husband and vice versa for their wife. And so the core uh, is what's important. If your core is not centered and grounded, you're really going to have different challenges. So that's where communication comes in, bridging the gaps uh, with the differences of views and perspectives and getting on that, getting towards that medium ground. Um, you, You can really move into purpose and uh, that purpose produces power, and so that's what you want. That's what you really want. Um, and another thing I think that gets me, uh, I was even sharing one time, is about image. People focus mm-hmm. a lot on image, on how they want to, people to see them, but not willing to work on uh, the things behind closed doors. So, you know, it's very important to work on those essential tools with each other because you both are not perfect. You're two imperfect people coming together 
to, to help, one, help one another become better. Wow. And then what if I get with you because of the image that yeah. was portrayed and then the reality of who you exactly. are um, sets in. And some people can keep the image up for a long, 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 long time. Uh, and yes, the reality yes. never doesn't either doesn't show up until after marriage or or it shows up. And then there's things that are, you just spend a lot of time and wasted a lot of time. Yeah, so I think so that sometimes people have to be, you have to be realistic. When you're meeting somebody and you're in a relationship, you have to be realistic. And what I've discovered is people become very unrealistic uh, and uh, they're not goal-oriented. And so when a person is unrealistic and not goal-oriented, they have no navigation system. And so people get together with people, uh, especially when you get to church, uh, well, the Lord told me. Well, yeah, the Lord told you, but what about the steps? Uh, the Bible says the book of the man so you have to have steps. That means there has to be process and plan of action in place when you're trying to be with somebody. If you want to be with this person, then you, there has to be uh, some clear objectives. And what I've discovered is people go into this thing with passion, but, but they don't have clear objectives. They don't have a strategy. And they're just going in because, oh, you look cute. But your looks are not going to get you far, far enough. You have to have more than just your outer appearance. You know, what's behind that, you know, the outer appearance, the external? What's in the internal? Woo! All right, listeners, y'all getting some relationship. We are getting some relationship empowerment here today. Elder Coleman, Minister Coleman, uh, tell them one more time how they can um, connect with you all for uh, your Periscope broadcast and what time you come on and all that good stuff. Um, they can reach us on um, my page, which is um, at Life According, the number two, Tish. And we generally are on, we choose uh, two different days. So it would either be on a Monday or a Thursday, but we always do a pre-advertisement so they'll know in advance. And it's generally around 7 o'clock in the evening so that we can kind of give people time enough to get in, get settled, and, and just be ready to interact. All right, there you have it, listeners. There you have it. And they could connect with you all on Facebook, Twitter. Would you like to give out any of those connection points? Um, our Facebook pages are Tish Coleman and Martise Coleman, and we also can be connected to through our ministry pages, which my husband's is Martise Coleman Ministries, and my page is Heal Women's Empowerment Ministries. All right. There you go. There you go. So listeners, connect, connect, check them out. All right. So let's jump into some questions um, that have come in. Would love to hear your response on some of the questions that have come in. So, um, this question is kind of funny, and you, and, and you may, you all may have heard this before or not. But uh, somebody said, "Where are all the good men? Where do you find them? Where do you go find good men to date?" I can answer that. Oh, all right. The good men are waiting for you in Christ. And what I mean by that is, if you are not anxious and you are working while you're waiting, letting God prepare you, he's setting you up to walk right into his path. The good men are not hidden, but if I am ratchet, if I am not ready, if I have extra baggage, if I got everything that's going to tear down the prince that God has set up for me, He's not going to give them to me. So if we want the good man, we have got to become that good woman and let God finish doing what he started in us so that we can connect with our destiny. Wait a minute. Did you say ratchet? (laughs) I did. (laughs) Listeners, you got to do a self-evaluation on that. You got to do it. Are you, do you have any ratchetness going on? Uh, And so that's, that's such a good point. Um, you know, that you, are you prepared? And you said you have, are you working while you're waiting? What What is that? Talk a little bit about that. Um, that's one of the things that I, I um, often minister to my single, um, the, the single ladies that um, I interact with. Um, I experience the coming into church and looking at every man because, oh, you got the prophecy or 
you know, you just you just want a husband, so you're trying to see if every single man that comes in, this is him. You're trying to make eye contact. You're doing all these things, but you're that's all you're doing. You're not doing your kingdom assignment. If you are working, you don't have time to look and see and try to find. A woman should be waiting. A woman should be looking to be found, not found looking. Ooh. So we need to be busy about our uh, individual given assignment, whether that is to be in a ministry if you're preaching or you're in a ministry as a teacher or, or whatever it is that you are doing your part to add to the kingdom. When you are busy working, there's no time for your mind to be idle and get caught up. All right. There you go. I'm not adding nothing. <laughs> uh, next question. I think, um, Elder Coleman, you're going to need to take this one. Um, and the question or the comment or the statement, um, it, it seems like men have an issue with commitment. But in particular, okay. I'm seeing... I'm seeing more, the person said, I'm seeing more and more of that also in the church, that men appear to have an issue with commitment. Talk about that. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good question. <laughs> uh, the commitment piece, yeah, um, a lot of times, and that's a great question, the commitment starts sometimes not when they're 30 or when they're 40 or when they're 20. Um, I've discovered the commitment starts when they're younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, their environment, the, how they brought up. Um, also, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different other things that come into play that affect them as they grow into young, into, from young adolescent teens until they get into young men in their 20s and in their 30s. Um, a lot of things what happens is uh, it starts off small, habits and behaviors. And sometimes they start off at 14, 15, maybe younger, not committing to even the smallest things in life. Um, and so it trickles into their adulthood as far as with relationships, whether it's friendships or whatever it is, and they find themselves not committed. And these are these are what I call behavior patterns and habits. And what I've discovered is even with men, we we pick up these things not uh, all of a sudden. It, they, they always, they, they, I say it like this, they have, they have always been there. But now that it's a it's a problem, and men mm. don't commit. Men sometimes don't commit because of, it is a fear. Uh, that there's a fear there because they now have to uh, they have to commit to commitment to something, and they have it's a covenant, it's a vow. And typically with men, uh, because men are hunters and pursuers, um, and they're also conquerors, um, they look to, to they like to explore. I'll say like pioneers. But when it comes to a relationship that's accompanied by God, it, it's a different dynamic, and it changes their views and their their thought process of how they've been doing things, and they have to now commit to commitment. Because one thing about marriage uh, is you're committing to a covenant, and anytime you're committed, and we all know, we all know all of us that's on here, covenant is something that's very like key and very important. And one thing about men is we don't at times want to succumb to or embrace this new thing. We're comfortable where we are. Mm-hmm. And we like it. We like it. And so when we, what we like, we, we want to keep. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't want to, we don't want to change it. But when you want to grow, like I said, um, with a man who finds a wife, he, he has to grow up and come out of the little boy stage. He has to come into as a man. Uh, the Bible says that the man think of his heart, so he. And uh, but also it says too. As, as, as Paul said, when I was a boy, I, I, I acted as a boy. But when I was a, when I became a man, I put away childish things. So your whole paradigm changes. So to order to commit, your whole paradigm has to change. Your whole worldview and perspective has to shift in order to embrace that level of commitment. Well, there you have it, listeners. There you have it. A wonderful explanation uh, around that question, which is, uh, I'm not going to say age old, but it is definitely a question that is a, a reoccurring theme that you uh, that you will hear. All right. And so the last question I have for you that came in, any tips or suggestions for those that are um, dating after divorce? They've had a divorce, and now they're back in the dating scene, back in the 
courting scene, any anything you would say uh, to someone who's having to date now, and it's a lot different than it was, I would say, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, advice for when you're dating after divorce. One, don't repeat what happened. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's num- that is number one. Do not repeat. Stay king to the signs. If you have owned up to your part that you may have played, we all have a role, even if it was marrying the wrong person. And, and, and this is why it didn't work out, because guess what? I shouldn't have been with them in the first place. But if we own up to our part and we are out here again and we have healed, first make sure you are completely and totally healed because the, other, the next person does not need to pay for what the previous relationship caused in your life. But what that previous person did, do not subject the new person in your life to pay for it. So, one, make sure you are healed. Two, do not repeat what you did. No matter how you you hooked up with the first one, just avoid all familiar patterns. Three, hmm, don't repeat it. (laughs) I mean, I, I I really can't stress that enough. And it's also, don't Try to compare the former with your current because that's still going to make that person have to pay for some things, try to live up to something. Um, If the relationship is over, there is a reason. So we need to move on, and we need to move on fresh. We need to start fresh. We need to be free and clear of emotional baggage, of emotional stresses. We need to be free and clear with an open and receiving heart, a clear mind, and a per- knowing our purpose, knowing what it is we want out of life, and then ready to submit to what God wants for our life. I cannot stress enough that it doesn't matter what I wanted. God gave me what I needed. And in what I needed, I found more than enough. All right. Woo, found more than enough. With Elder Coleman. Oh, yeah, Elder Coleman, you want to add, <laughs> add anything to that? Yeah, I want to say, yeah. as much as you were talking, I'm glad you asked. One of the things that crossed my mind was, and I'm not sure who the people who are listening, but I feel that to say this, um, it's very important to make sure you, you get closure. On the yeah. Yeah. Get closure. It's very important um, to get closure because what I've discovered, too, is people don't get closure and they go into another relationship with other doors open. So this is just hit me. You have to close the portals. It's very important to close those portals. All of them. Because if they're open, you're like an open conduit. And everybody, then what happens is you're plugged in by your past, present, and then your future. And you really can't progress. So it, it's very important to get that closure, close those doors, um, and, and move forward. Some people have cracked doors, some people have wide open doors, halfway doors, however you may have them, but it's very important to just close them. Get some closure. Woo, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Well, big shout out to both of you. Uh, I, I know that our listeners feel more empowered in their relationship and the relationships that they are pursuing. One more time, let the listeners know how they can connect with you all and in particular, uh, follow you all uh, on your Periscope and get continue to get more relationship empowerment. Um, they can um, check out the Periscope tapings on um, at Life According to Tish, the number two, and they can also connect with my husband and follow him on Periscope um, at Marquis Coleman. We're on Facebook, same thing, Marquis Coleman, Tish Coleman. It's that simple. All right, it's that simple. And I have tagged uh, on all of my places. And also you can go to Charvette.com, Charvette.com. We have information uh, about our first segment guest and our second segment guest. I uh, want to give a big shout-out to Sholanda Bibbs, who tagged us on uh, on Facebook. And I quote, are you in a relationship based on passion or purpose? Thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you for Bibbs. listening. <laughs> And tagging and tagging. We appreciate it. Uh, here, well, that is a wrap. My last question for you, and I would love for both of you to answer. We'll start with Minister uh, Coleman and end with Elder Coleman. The goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know what continues to motivate you. What continues to motivate me is knowing that um, what God did for me when he gave me this man, he didn't have to. 
So I show my gratefulness every day. Um, the way he loves me, the way he makes me laugh, the way he supports me, the way he pushes me, and the man that he really, really, truly is, I couldn't have asked or found better if I did it myself. So he motivates me. I just look at him, and I'm motivated. All right. That's awesome, awesome. All right. Elder Coleman, what motivates you? Yes, um, what motivates me about, and that's a great question, um, with my wife, Tish, is her love. Um, She is very genuine and very compassionate. And one thing I love about her is that she speaks, you know, life into me and with, you know, with the purpose and the call of my life and uh, what God has given into our lives. And one thing I love about her is she, she's definitely a person of expression. I, I'm not sure if people on here may have, you know, read the five love languages, but my wife truly uh, <laughs> expresses all of those languages and, and I can say I'm grateful to, for each of those because they're impacting my life. And then it was so great about it is when I get that impact, I'm able to share with others. So, I mean, she, she touches all corners, and I really can't complain at all. <laughs> all right, all right. The five love languages, what a great. And there's a great online assessment. Uh, you can take singles or married or dating, a great online yeah. assessment to figure out which of the love, which way you like to receive love, your language, how you talk in love. Uh, you can just Google that and find it, the five love languages. Great, great, great. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll be keeping up with you on Periscope. Thank you. We love you. Love you. Oh, thank you. Love you guys, too. All right, Bye-bye. listeners, that's going to be a wrap for today's show. Uh, as always, if you missed anything or you're like, oh, somebody needed to hear this, you can send them over to Charvette. Dot com, send them over to charvet.com and they will be able to hear the replay uh, of this in the podcast. And we thank you so much for checking us out. Check us, check back with us next week where we bring you more phenomenal shows and we do this all over again. Live from Richmond, Virginia, you have been listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Connect with her at charvette.com. And until next week, stay motivated, excited, and influenced. The Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Signing off. Want a faster and better way to enjoy your entertainment at home and on the go? Take the Xfinity X1 Challenge and see how your service stacks up at Xfinity.com slash challenge. Or for a great offer, call 1-800-XFINITY or click today. Restrictions apply. Summer's bringing the sun while we've got the fun at Water Country USA. Virginia's largest water park. It's a different rush every time with big slides, water rides, and so many ways to relax. Take the plunge down Colossal Curl. Kick back in a cabana or just chill in the shade. Buy a Water Country USA fun cart and pay for a day. Play all summer long. Visit watercountryusa.com. Restrictions apply.